Welcome to NTN Nightly. I'm Huma Dimak. This edition Stop Stories. The official findings of an archaeological survey has given the green light to the carbon development on Mount Hardy. St. Lucia recommits to the environment on this Earth Day under the theme Restore Our Earth. And First National Bank joins the list of local companies coming to the aid of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The official findings of an archaeological survey on the former Arawak burial ground, which forms part of the multi-million dollar Cabot development, has been released. The report gives an all-clear for the continuation of the development on Mount Hardy. The former Arawak burial ground, with its archaeological significance today, has been the focus of major media attention, with concerns being raised by the St. Lucia National Trust. The developers, Cabot St. Lucia, under the recommendation of the St. Lucia National Trust, engaged the services of eminent and internationally respected archaeologist Dr. Reginald Murphy to undertake a physical study of the area. He described his research as bittersweet from an archaeologist's perspective, as he had hoped to discover significant archaeological findings, but found nothing remarkable. Now, as far as the development potential or the archaeology of the site, we can say it's been almost totally eroded, washed out natural causes and vehicular traffic. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of that particular site. We did a complete comparison. We looked at where people excavated before. We found those spots. Um, they were gone, almost bedrock in most places. Then we looked at where the, the, the houses were located, because those are also mapped by the, the University of Leiden. They're completely gone. We looked at the burial ground area. That's all gone. And by the way, no complete individuals are found there, just partial remains of over 40 people. The study was also a requirement of the local DCA in order to grant permission to Cabot to continue works in that specific area. The local archaeological and historical society was asked to consult with DCA and to prepare the terms of reference for the study. President of the Archaeological and Historical Society, Dr. Winston Filgens, confirmed the integrity of the survey. I would want to focus solely on our role in, this, in all of this. Um, we, we advised the DCA. The advice that we gave was that a proper archaeological assessment was supposed to be done. The report has come back. We have read the report. The report are according to terms of reference. The report are also according to the normal um, archaeological assessment projects around the world. And we satisfied that the gentleman who did the work, Mr. Mr. Murphy, did what he was asked to do, and the report has met our terms. Dr. Murphy was also asked to give an expert opinion as to whether his findings hindered the developers from moving forward. All I can say is from professional archaeological opinion, opinion, there's nothing there of cultural heritage values, tangible values, worthy of, say, stopping a project. I mean, again, if I'm asked to make a decision, to, should they go ahead and do it? I look at the values of the job creations, you have to look at the economical values, I have to look at all those things and balance it out against heritage because heritage must be seen to be contributing financially, otherwise no sites are going to be saved. We have to look at the economic values of heritage. And this is a good example of you have a heritage site, you study it, and if you have to put the development in, you study it until there's nothing left and get everything you can out of it and then you can develop it but you have the historical document. This is the kind of case I think it, I would say yes, it could be developed at this point in time. The Cabot team has welcomed the findings and the green light to proceed with the works in the location of concern. CEO of Cabot St. Lucia is Christine Thompson. Living in harmony with our communities is at the core of what we value as a corporation. And what that means is not only providing economic opportunities for the members of that community, but also respecting and protecting the flora and fauna on the site, the history of the site, the peoples that live there, the marine environment that surrounds the site, the conservation of scarce resources like water. So for example, on this course, we will use all drought resistant strains of grass so that we can serve whatever resources that we have and really protecting the environment in the best possible way that we can. One of the key recommendations of the archaeology report is that an archaeologist be present when any digging or excavation work is taking place in that specific area. 
Cabot has noted that they are working closely with the local archaeological and historical society to facilitate this and has also committed to erecting a monument in the area to memorialize the indigenous peoples. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. St. Lucia on Thursday, 22 April, joined the global community in observing Earth Day. To commemorate the occasion in just over six months prior to the 26th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the Department of Sustainable Development launched Climate Change in St. Lucia. Let's make it our drama. A stimulating four-minute animated video designed to raise public awareness about climate change, particularly among youth, and accelerate climate change action across the country. The video created by local artist Ted Sandiford of Acid Creations in collaboration with DSD and UNICEF features musician Ezra Defund Machine Augustine and radio host Francesca Franny Solomon as narrators. The animated video is intended to be used in schools, summer camps among youth groups and otherwise to introduce students to and to help galvanize action on climate change while sharing information on government's plans such as the nationally determined contribution and the national adaptation plan. Here's an excerpt. Climate change and environmental education is key. For instance, Discuss how our tourism and agricultural sectors can contribute to the fight against climate change and how this can help our country promote a sustainable tourism and agriculture model and create jobs. Share ideas on how renewable energy and energy efficiency practices can make our environment clean and green. Read about climate change. There is so much to learn. Did you know that over 50% of our coral is already bleached? Did you know how drought is impacting our farmers? Climate change will only make things worse. Learn about how to tackle these problems. And of course, take action. Think of dengue. If you do your part by clearing stagnant water, we can eradicate it together. Rewarding, isn't it? You can also join tree planting campaigns or gardening activities at your school to protect both our environment and your health. Think of all the other little practical things you can do on a daily basis, such as reducing, recycling, reusing, and repurposing, which will help you save a lot of money. Meantime, the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries celebrated the local environment under the designated theme, Restore Our Earth. Here's Miguel Morissette. Happy Earth Day! The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries is joining the world in the commemoration of Earth Day 2021. The theme for this year's observance is Restore Our Earth. Ecosystems and natural resources are a vital part of St. Lucia's tourism sector. The Permanent Secretary, Donalyn Vite, speaking on the importance of this year's theme, says it is necessary to protect and preserve our green spaces for future generations and to achieve economic sustenance. It's quite impossible for tourism to take place or even to thrive in a world where the earth is not protected and the earth is not respected. And so we are very delighted here in St. Lucia that we have a bounty of natural resources that is really able to allow St. Lucia to put itself out there in the world market for tourism. Um, we have the extent of our driving volcano. We have our underwater features, our dive sites. Um, our wonderful creatures below, um, below, below the sea. Um, we also have our sky rides and our wonderful parks and recreational facilities that really surround, surround us with green spaces and amenities that allows not only visitors but St. Lucians to recreate and enjoy. Viti says the COVID-19 pandemic has created an opportunity 
to focus on the rehabilitation of green areas and ecosystems. We've been seeing how many of our clients, um, those persons who have sites and attractions, those persons who have farms and they were taking care of, of green spaces, how they have gone further and developed it and been able to realize that this downtime has given them a significant opportunity to increase um, um, forest cover and also to really take care and nurture and develop various facets that we could use as part of our tourism industry. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Lenita Joseph says, the day provides an opportunity for staff to reflect on the significance of the planet and to celebrate its existence in light of recent natural disasters. So here in the Ministry of Tourism, we wanted to celebrate Earth Day, we wanted to celebrate the place that we live in and how much we appreciate what this planet does for us. So we're celebrating today, so the staff have dressed up in animal print, in floral print, or in earth colors, just to, to, to engender that sense of, of wellness and, and, and thankfulness and appreciation for our environment. And also for lunch, we're having local food, not processed food, but you know, stuff that has been grown here, you know, um, ground provisions and fish. So we're looking at both land-based and marine-based um, life, and we're having appreciation for it. Joseph says the exercise allowed the ministry to lend its voice to the importance of protecting the earth. From the Government Information Service, Miguel Morissette reporting. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer has reported satisfaction with the opening of the third term of the academic year in the physical setting. Students returned to the classroom Monday, 19 April 2021 after adapting to virtual learning for the better part of the past year due to COVID-19. Indications of the transition back to the classroom setting has been generally smooth, with the Department of Education and the Ministry of Health working closely to ensure that protocols are adhered to. As a parent and long-serving educator, I'm well placed to appreciate the anxiety as well as relief associated with the reopening of school for many parents and staff. We are keenly aware of the efforts of many educators and applaud them for the preparations get at welcoming our students back. We saw some creative and fun projects that reminded students of safety protocols while at the same time reaffirming their sense of belonging at the educational institutions island-wide. Well done everyone and thank you for your efforts. We thank you for this initial step at what we hope will be a sustained third term. Like other sectors of society, educational institutions will be managing COVID cases under the guidance of the Department of Health. We want to reassure parents that they will be contacted as per the need, and we hope there is no need to do so, but we want to reaffirm our commitment to always keeping them informed if their children are impacted in any way. We have staff, parents, and students who in some way or another may be impacted reference COVID-19. We wish therefore to remind all stakeholders of the specific responses to various scenarios that were developed prior to the reopening of school. We encourage everyone to practice and adhere to the protocols that are clearly established so as to reduce any possible spread. We must, especially as adults, be vigilant and responsible in our actions so as to reduce any risk to our younger ones. Our commitment is clear. Health, safety, and a successful educational journey for all. Educational institutions will operate from Monday to Friday based on their established school hours. Some schools will adopt a whole school approach based on physical infrastructure and school population. Other schools will operate using the alternate day system, six day cycle, thus providing at least three days of face to face instruction to students. Meanwhile, the St. Lucia Students Council has called on all students to cooperate with school and health authorities and adhere to all. COVID-19 protocols in order to achieve some sense of normalcy. Jaloup Constantine is the public relations officer. We understand that as schools reopen, we will all attempt to jumpstart our education and that there is no one-size-fits-all method that will work for us all. 
But it will be critical for us as students to take responsibility and work alongside our teachers, our peers, and our parents to ensure that we have a smooth transition to face-to-face -face learning. Students of St. Lucia, now more than ever, your voices matter. Your cries for help have always been heard. Please do not be afraid to seek guidance from your peers as we all have to cope with the trauma of this pandemic. Constantine is encouraging students to continue to adapt and to demonstrate resilience in this new era dictated by the coronavirus. First National Bank, St. Lucia Limited, has made a significant donation of drinking water and water storage tanks for the families most affected by the eruptions of the La Sofia volcano in Sister Island, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Jesse Leons reports. A total of 2,000 cases of drinking water plus 5,800 water storage tanks were placed on boats and shipped along with other relief supplies to the residents that were displaced from their homes and also for general distribution where the supplies were most needed. Present at the Viewfort docks to see the handover was Managing Director of First National Bank, Jonathan Johannes. As, as a corporate entity with deep connections in St. Vincent and hopefully if all goes well soon to be an operator in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we felt it necessary to reach out at a time of need for the people and the government over there. Um, we firmly believe that if the shoe was on the other foot, they would have done the same for us and we have history and evidence to show the deep support and deep ties that the islands have. So reaching out to St. Vincent at a time of need was a natural thing for us to do. Director of NEMO, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Michelle Forbes, received the items on behalf of the government and people of that country. I would like to express thanks to the First National Bank for the donation of these 5,800 gallon water tanks to the people and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As we all know, we are still experiencing explosive eruptions or episodes from the Lasso Freire volcano, and this has really severely affected our water distribution throughout the country. These water tanks will go a long way in supporting not just NEMO but the agencies that belong to, on, to NEMO in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The receipt and coordination of the donations were handled by Ms. Vonetta Rogers, country manager for RBC RBTT, which was recently purchased by the OECS Consortium of Indigenous Banks. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quiol. was really nice and she told me that mouth rinsing is very important for healthy teeth. How so? Rinsing with water gets rid of food in between your teeth which can protect you from getting cavities. No way! So after I eat or drink, I think it's a good idea to rinse out my mouth with water. Yes! Make sure to spit out the water after rinsing because swallowing will only bring the germs into your body. Remember! Water is an easy and cost-effective way to instantly boost your health and a healthy body to fight many diseases, including COVID-19. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the Antian Novella Quiol. Monsieur Tan, Herma, Monsieur Madame Department, Kenny West Cosabilité, 
pour information à le gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS à ce même télévision nationale PIA NTN Capacito Nouvelle à Creole pour cette Primus Hutchinson Ministère des Affaires touristiques à gouvernement cette ci observer journée internationale pour préserver la terre à d'en façon pour montrer cette lien diverses manières yo ka présenter l'environnement et ces diverses démarches qui nécessaires pour préserver l'environnement nous du royon exhibition ministère des affaires touristiques pour éduquer public là et aussi les officiers concernant respect et protection pour vivre terre et l'environnement généralement si que pour mon à ministère des affaires touristiques donner une vite expliquer nécessité et valeur initiative ça là nous avons fait un effort pour dire que manier yo ça célébrer la terre et porter la terre en chaque monde de là yo 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 kavwe we by do um finet um motoka et yo ka fait un chai bay ki pa bon de les pas propre mais tout ces bay ça a les yo vin ensemble yo ka um yo pa ka noui la terre yo ka destroy la terre so nou ka di moun um enceinte ici au want tout pays tout tout pour commune um, pour célébrer la terre nous besoin pour manger nous nous besoin pour nager nous besoin pour pour um, um, qui mène au cadre de poisson um, pour faire toute bagarre nous nous ça manger et nous ni en cette ici so um, nous voulons tourisme mais nous pas fait tour, nous pas voulons tourisme um, croiser la terre ben destroy la terre so nous ca encourager moun même si vous avez un uh, livelihood pour faire une une manière où ça enjoy où ça préserve la terre pas pas pa pour quoi tout seul mais pour un chaque petit maman qui va venir à pour Premier ministre cette ci et ministre des affaires finances honorable Alan Chasney a annoncé que le gouvernement a fait provision en hauteur de 24.2 millions de dollars pour continuer le programme pour bâtir divers projets nationaux à PIA Premier ministre Chasney a fait annoncement ça là durant présentation budget pour l'année 2021 pour 22 mardi passé à Kai Consit Premier ministre l'a fait comprendre que projet ça là qu'a trouvé financé par banque de développement caribla ça c'est CDB. Premier ministre l'a dit aussi gouvernement qu'a entré à financement deuxième phase projet de redéveloppement système de l'eau à Denry et qui travaille qu'a continuer pour nettoyer et filtrer dans l'eau John Compton. Premier ministre l'a dit aussi il aura bâti facilité pour déposer toutes ces bouteilles et travailler à ce projet ça là pour nettoyer dans l'eau John Compton qui ça a commencé en mois d'octobre 2020 et déjà très avancé. Le projet en l'eau de nuit est fini car il peut service pour plus de 100 000 résidents. Ça de nuit. Le Premier ministre Chasney a annoncé que le projet pour bâtir l'aéroport Rio Anora en neuf a augmenté la capacité par 250 Le Premier ministre a dit aussi que la Banque mondiale a offert un bon soulagement financier pour aider à adresser les problèmes de l'eau. Et aussi pour bâtir la baisse avec l'autre nécessité de équipement parmi l'autre pour venger l'aéroport Rio Anora. En développement touristique, le Premier ministre a montré que 60% des travailleurs ont retourné à travailler. Et le secteur de tourisme est supposé vivre en opération en cette ci en mois de juillet. Et la capacité de services avion de Caspé est très haut entre juillet et décembre. Le Premier ministre Chasné a déclaré que le projet touristique pour ces villages pays qui a commencé à gozilé, souffrir et à slaver. Le projet de la Kaibati a facilité 4 chambres dormies et 4 chambres pour payer une utilité à un village là même, ça s'est passé. En souffrir, le projet de la Kaïwe a bâti un restaurant devant la Wad et aussi le bord de la mer. En souffrir, tout ce qui est le bord de la mer, en souffrir, a trouvé un fichier neuf. En facilité, particulièrement pour éviter, la Kaïne a facilité en palmis pour les revendeurs, tout le monde, diverses marchandises et le travail qui a fait à ce développement de la mer et aussi facilité pour le public la poser. Le travail qui a fait pour ranger Tché à Gozile et à Slaoué a un plus haut degré. Le Premier ministre a aussi mentionné le projet de deuxième phase de redéveloppement de la place à Castoui, rangement nouveau de la mer Canary, deuxième phase de redéveloppement de Derek Walker Square, rangement nouveau pour faciliter qui a produit divers articles qui a fait par la mer. Ça c'est un par un choix et un changement nouveau pour faciliter 
Old Trafford a souffrir. Le citoyen PIA, j'ai trouvé l'occasion pour sa comprendre la présentation du budget pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine. L'année en facilité qui a fait, qui a fait très facile pour n'importe citoyen, c'est de comprendre la manière dont le budget a été préparé et ses diverses façons pour expliquer sans tous ces gros mots techniques qui sont très difficiles pour ces gens ordinaires à comprendre. Le gouvernement de ce pays est très important pour le peuple de ce comprendre la manière dont il fait cela qu'il travaille et significativement à la vie. Ça, c'est la manière le gouvernement a amassé l'argent, la manière dont il a dépassé avec toutes les initiatives qui ont un bénéfice de ce pays. Alors, pour la première fois dans l'histoire de ce et le gouvernement, ils ont présenté un GID à ce moment-là pour comprendre le budget pour 2021, pour vendre plus facilement. Ça fait et puis collaboration département finance, objectif là, c'est pour présenter une façon pour tout le monde public là, ça lit et comprendre très facilement et pour faire les membres publics plus au courant et puis toutes ces informations qui ont budget ça là, en façon qui a été trouvé présenté, avec comment a été trouvé présenté à quel concept. Si à ce point, gouvernement, dit ça là, qui a aidé les citoyens, c'est ici, ni yon meilleur comprendre et pour faire yon trois plus savants à ce ces plans que le gouvernement ni en place pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine. Yon sa trouvé dit ça là à ce internet là, si vous visitez www.finance.gov.lc slash programs slash view slash 125 et aussi online flipping book f l i p p i n g b w o k dot com slash view slash seven zero five eight one six four five two slash attachments f pour comprendre ça premier ou ça fait issue qui les call et do pour ça défricher ça on est passé là bas ok c'est comme ça nous notre nouvelle amie madame mon cœur et monsieur autre pour qu'à garder mon cœur une invitation je l'ai pu encore c'est dire quand ça fait la vie les gars ils passent dans l'autre nouvelle à quoi à la présent mon cœur vieux présent au homme Messi appeal primus that brings us to the end of NTN nightly join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. you could also catch up with us anytime on the government of Saint Lucia Facebook page or YouTube channel I'm Tomadi Ma. Thank you.